This is a Perkid Aleph, Chelik Aleph, Perkid Aleph in Ur Sakodesh. Um, and uh, we're almost at the end of the first section here. Um, you know, only getting a couple more pieces. This one is a pretty short piece called Erech Hanigudim. It really means the uh, value or the importance of there being contrasts, I guess you could say, contrasts or opposing ideas, um, ideas that are very distinct. And the uh, the main point of this short piece is essentially to highlight how whenever you encounter ideas, so it's very important to distinguish between them and to sort of know each one in a very individual sense and to spend time thinking through each piece of the idea. So sometimes we, uh, I remember when, when I was uh, when I was learning um, for smicha and even after that when I was learning in KBY, so um, there were a lot of situations where I was surrounded by a lot of very quick thinking people, very smart people. I'm a very slow thinking person. And sometimes when you're surrounded by quick thinking people, um, or even people who are not such quick thinkers, not such clear thinkers, but um, they talk a lot or seem to discuss or articulate a lot of ideas at once. So it gets very, it gets almost cumbersome trying to think about uh, all the different things that are kind of getting articulated or put out there. And what I used to do was uh, I would try to really just ignore the people that were talking to me. And that's a little rude, I guess, but the way that I did it was not obviously overtly rude, but people would be saying something and then I would kind of be like, one second, I need to think about what it is that you're saying. And I would kind of stop them and then I would just go into my own head and sort of think very carefully through the first point that they made and just made sure that I understood it. And then I would ask them to say the second point again, make sure I understood that. Uh, it's also when, when, when you learn Gemara, so that's a great way to do that too. And even honestly, like when I, when I was learning Gemara, so that's uh, that's really what Rashi's whole parish is really about, as opposed to Tosfos. Tosfos is trying to juggle multiple uh, ideas and interconnect them. And Rashi is really about trying to drill down into a particular one and understand it. And although he, a lot of what he says is based on things from other places, but he's more naturally, his parish is more naturally geared towards uh, understanding something intrins intrinsically as opposed to relatively. Um, another good example from my own life was uh, when I was learning finance. So I had no background in finance at all. And I basically just, uh, I was reading these books about finance. One was called The Intelligent Investor, which I had uh, gotten from a friend of mine and it was a fascinating book that a lot of which I did not understand at all and the only way I was able to understand it was by reading it very slowly and then literally either thinking about and then googling and then thinking about more and trying to connect all the different ideas that were going on in that book um, and there's a lot of language and, and financial concepts that I had just never heard of and uh, the only way to kind of deal with it is to kind of isolate each one. Be like, Let me understand what exactly is this thing and what exactly is this thing. And, and then what is a balance sheet? And then, okay, what is each part of a balance sheet? And then how does a balance sheet interconnect with a cash flow sheet? And where does it interconnect with an earnings statement? These are all different examples from finance. But each one of those things you have to kind of think through. I remember walking every morning to work and kind of like spending time just thinking through different ideas that I was trying to understand very clearly so that I could properly apply them. And when you do that, so it develops a lot of patience and a lot of, uh, a lot of openness because you're almost like, instead of having to spend time arguing, which I think is the contrast, uh, a lot of times you have uh, chavrusas or friends or people who are discussing something and we're so quick to, to attack something back or to respond without really thinking it through what exactly it is that we're hearing. And then that creates just jumbled ideas because we have, we have this instinct that if I don't say something now, then I can't show that I'm as smart or as knowledgeable or as involved or as passionate. And it's actually much more empowering for ourselves and for the other person to really carefully process each idea and then share uh, a new thought about that idea once we've grasped all the implications of that. So this actually, these two ways of being, the the listening in order to attack back and listening in order to deeply understand in order to then discuss at a deeper level. So that's really what it means in Pirkei Avos when we talk about a machlokas l'shem shamayim and a machlokas shelo l'shem shamayim. And a machlokas shelo l'shem shamayim is only really, each person is just individual. Two people are just arguing and one person is just over here talking out of himself at someone else and the other person is doing the same or maybe not the same but at least one person is doing that where I'm just talking out of my head at someone as opposed to 
letting things come into my head, carefully processing them, and then sharing something new in response, which is a machlokas l'shem shem, which is really not even an argument. It's really just a growth learning experience that is incredibly empowering and, and, and very, very deep in terms of just getting further in our, in our clarity and our understanding of ourselves and whatever it is that we're discussing. So this is really about that. Erech HaNigudim is really about the value of those contrasted ideas, the separations between ideas, and how that separation really leads to greater, um, greater understanding and then greater connection, really. Because when you understand what an idea is not saying, then you can understand how to, pro after you have clarity of each piece, then you can figure out exactly how each idea is interconnected. So if I can understand what a balance sheet is, and then I can understand after that what a cash flow sheet is, then I can understand how those two things are connected in a very clear way and how they're built. And you have all that clarified and you sort of thought it through, even if it takes you three or four hours to do that. But at the end, when you're having a conversation with somebody who is a quicker thinker or someone who is a little bit less intense in terms of actually clarifying these things, then you'll very quickly, very easily be able to process and understand what it is that they're suggesting and put it into the framework that you now have clearly laid out in front of you. So, and where it fits, where it doesn't fit. And then if it doesn't fit, you can ass assess why it doesn't fit. Is it because they're jumbled or is it because I misunderstood something or is it because there's some new idea here that I never heard before? And that's really how we can learn in a very deep way, anything really. So that's the value of, of contrast is this thing is this and not that. And once I know that it's not that, then I can understand it individually. Then I can connect it to that. Instead of having a jumbled, you know, cumbersome set of ideas, I can really have clearly defined segments that are now interlinked in the proper places. So that's what this is. Very short. Let's just read it through. All contrasts, separations that are found in between different ideas, uh, different perceptions, perspectives. And all the negation that seems to kind of apply from one segment to another one, because we're saying, well, this is not that, and that seems to this seems to negate that. So it, it seems to. So from your eye, it looks like that. And these types of contrasts, they expand, they grow they, they, in our minds. They become more uh, visible in our minds. They take up greater space. The more, the more that, that the ideas themselves take up greater space. In other words, the more you think about an idea, so the more it will now be clearly not that. It's this and not that. Someone who looks inside, these things appear to have this these distance locations, separated locations, that are kind of like plots on in land, like where you plant things, and each one has its own like you know row of, of stuff that's growing. But each of these plots kind of like sustains or 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 um, or gives. Uh, depth or freshness or sustenance to each of these ideas, you think of it as ideas that are growing in the fertile soil of your mind, each plot is its own individual uh, self-sustaining almost, or fertile area. So each idea, like if you kind of delve into it, it can be its own independent idea and it can be understood individually. So it means that each of them can, each of them can um, pull sustenance for, for themselves from you. Sustenance for an idea is really your attention. If you're paying attention to an idea in your mind, that means that now it's being sustained, it's being given focus. And as you do that, it kind of clarifies more and more how that's an individual idea that needs to be understood on its own. So that's what that's, that's what that means. That will allow each one, each and every idea, to kind of develop and be developed in its own independent, individual way, fully. But yes, each one will have its own special focus that will then be kind of bundled together in its own space with its own details. Whereas in contrast, the 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 mixing together or the, or the closifying, the the bringing the ideas closer to each other would actually weaken each one would and would make everything very would make would mess things up, would make things very confused and broken down. When you bring the ideas together, and this this detail floats into that area, and these things all come together in weird ways. So first, clarification of each one belongs. Then you can do that. And then he, and then he says that this unification where each one but a fitting one achtos means oneness and metoma means like fit together like so something is matim you're fitting it together exactly where it belongs then that that comes only through this rechuk through this distancing you can that you can only achieve that through the distancing uh proper distancing of each of the ideas then you can bring them properly together and so the distancing itself is kind of what leads you to really get clarity on where the ideas fit and it's actually fascinating because 
the next level is actually once you have the ringing of them together, so then you can actually really have a lot of creativity there because you can understand how these ideas interconnect, and that really makes it into a working model. It's kind of like thinking about a car. A car is made out of lots of parts, and forget even just the actual mechanical parts, the functional parts. You have lights and windshield wipers, window cleaners, we'll call them, and you have uh, you have you have uh, a music machine in there, a radio, a CD player. Uh, you have you know you have your your um, you have lights inside the car. You have couches inside the car. You have air conditioning inside the car. Each of these are separate parts. You also have the ability to drive and move the car. And like when you know how to put all these things together and understand each one clearly, then you can actually have the car work as like this one world. We call it a car. So the bringing together of all those individually understood parts creates something which is even greater than all of them. Now we have a car, which is like a whole identity. It's a new concept. So that's really where we have the whole can be greater than some of its parts. When the parts are clearly delineated and understood, then we can bring them together to create a sum that is greater than that. And he says, he ends up with this phrase from the Zohar, which is, which basically means when you allow yourself to experience the separateness of things, that's what you can then end that process of experiencing that with chibura, with connecting them together. That's, that's really exactly the process we just said. And that's why the word shari here really is very appropriate because it really means let it happen. Like don't, don't rush to put the ideas together and, and force them into, into a jumble, but let them each kind of sit and, and almost like gestate uh, inside of your mind, and then when you let, when you have the peace of mind to do that, to let, instead of rushing to argue or to to figure something out, you just kind of let the ideas uh, implant in that way, and then when you do that, you can actually ultimately reach a place where they all fit together, and so just kind of let it happen in a very relaxed, natural way. That's really what the what that phrase means. And that's that's uh, basically Parakidalik.